Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. It's a crisp Saturday morning, first real spring morning. A little chilly. I got to mow two and a half acres, so uh, I'm waiting for the dew to dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to work on this. So let's do a little work on getting that lure that's on the lathe ready to get this hinge on it. So it's really nice to be working uh, in this natural light, but let me bring the camera just a little closer to the work so I can show you what I'm doing. Okay, so you can clearly see I've got some of the details cut in. This is the stuff I already do on the lathe. I've got these big eye sockets on. Uh, I've got my line for my separation. And I've started to draw in this uh, little bit of a radius here for the, for the joint. Now, uh, you might be tempted to uh, just do this radius on the lathe. But remember, if you start cutting in and, and creating that uh, radius it's not really a radius it'll be sort of a hemispherical end so it'll be kind of like this this knuckle joint that isn't as attractive and uh, won't uh, sort of carry the paint job across the joint very well so aesthetically it's not very good so what i did is i measured across took half of that which this is one and a quarter uh, and went five eighths of, of an inch back and five eighths of an inch uh, in this direction and then it makes it easy enough to just take a compass and sort of sketch in this little bit of a radius here. It doesn't have to be perfect and you can just do this uh, sort of by hand if you want to, if you've got the skills to make that kind of uh, drawing. And this way, this gives me a guide. It's not going to be exactly what I end up uh, shaving off, but it'll be pretty close. So now I'm going to go ahead and separate it and then we'll start carving. Before I start shaping this thing, I'm going to draw a line right down the middle. And what that'll do is give me a nice visual uh, waypoint to sort of gauge how much I've taken off each side so I can get a, a pretty uniform curve. Okay, so there it is. Uh, let's see how that works. Okay, so you can see that I followed the contour of those uh, lines that we drew in, those little sketch lines, uh, and now I've got a pretty nice radius. It'll take a little more sanding, but not too much. I just need to bust down these hard edges and we'll be good to go. Okay, here's the tail end. We're gonna do the same thing. I've got the, uh, the line drawn, let's go. Okay, so now there's that nice radius. You can see the elliptic shape there uh, that should drop about the same distance on the other side. This one needs to come down a little farther uh, to bl blend in. I'll work that and then we'll uh, start working on the hardware. So before I go too far along refining the shape and getting things sanded down, I needed to mark the center. Now uh, I'm concerned that I would have end up with a little bit of an offset once I get my hinge plate in there. So what I did was I marked the center of the front piece of the lure uh, using this nice little gauge, making sure that I got the center just right. And then I carried that center mark over to the smaller one, uh, to the back part of the lure. This way I'm, I can be relatively certain that when I put this together it won't have some oddball offset. So. Now I need to figure out a way to cut this slot, but first I need to know how deep that slot's gonna be, and that's gonna be dependent on how big that hinge plate will be, and that'll take a little bit of sort of analysis. So let's go to the dry erase board and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so uh, this is our old drawing. We're gonna need to refine this just a little bit. Let's just look at what we have right now, which is Now we've already got our, our marks for the radius on our lure, so I need to know how big. First we need to figure out what the diameter of that hole is going to be for our uh, hinge pin. So remember 
20% is kind of like, oops. Remember 20% is sort of uh, what we're looking for as far as getting a nice sweet spot for the amount of material we're gonna eat up with that hole. So 20% of the radius, and the, the radius is uh, equal to 1.6 centimeters. So 26 equals 0.32 centimeters. And that means that the diameter of our pin has to be twice that. So that is 0.64 centimeters. And that's pretty close to a quarter of an inch. So I need a quarter inch pin. Uh, I'm gonna use aluminum. I've got some hollow tube aluminum and we'll cut a piece of that and we'll go from there. Okay, so here's the tube I'm gonna use. It's a quarter inch OD. It's very soft. Uh, it tends to bend easily. So I'm gonna need to stiffen it a little bit. So my, my intention is to fill it with uh, resin. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, casting resin without any uh, micro balloons in it. So, but first I'm gonna cut these to length. time to come up with some dimensions for this link uh, plate and let me just draw a rectangle so that we have because that's essentially what I'm going to be starting with a rectangle of aluminum now I want to know where I need to drill that hole on each end uh, knowing that it's a quarter inch I need to know how much of a distance I need from the edge of the rectangle how close can they be to the edge and still be strong enough so they don't burst if they get pulled hard? I'm going to use aluminum. Uh, I've got this piece of an old uh, yardstick I got at Harbor Freight. It's a cheap piece of aluminum, nothing special. Uh, it's a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I'm going to go ahead and test a piece that I've got two holes drilled in it. About an eighth of an inch on this uh, side. And, and on, on this one it's about 3.32. So, I can test which one bursts first. Let's go and take it out to the winch and pull on it, see if we can break it. Okay, so I tested this little aluminum tab. Uh, it uh, exceeded what I was uh, willing to load it at. It loaded to about 300 pounds. I can see where the holes elongated a little bit at the top and at the bottom, but uh, they weren't close to breaking, and I wasn't feeling uh, like having that machine slam around. So now it's, a, it's time to calculate that total distance, right? So since this thing held up and the one small side was 330 seconds, I'm gonna go with 330 seconds on this wall over here. So let's go ahead and just sketch that out. And I know the hole is a quarter inch, uh, now I need to know what this distance is. So that we're going to figure out with the lure itself. So knowing that I want this thing really close together, probably about a 30 second apart, uh, and I want it to be able to roll all the way around. So I'm going to measure from this center point to the center point on this body, add a 30 second of an inch, and that should get me what I need. So let's continue in English units since we apparently switched. So it is one and three sixteenths. So one and seven thirty seconds, I guess. Oh, so one and five eighths is the total length. Uh, that ought to make it easy. I'm gonna go ahead and draw it out on that piece of aluminum, cut it out, start drilling, and then we'll come back to this.
Okay, so before I cut the slot in here so that that uh, hinge plate can go in there, I need to be able to align it. So what I've done is drawn a line that aligns with the center of this eye because that's aligned with the point, uh, and then align it with that center mark that I know is right. And so this way I can, when I cut, I can align these two, and I know it. I know the hinge will be aligned with the center of the body. And that's what you want. You don't want just a random line. So I want to do the same thing here. I've got a little tick here for the center uh, of the back. And I'm just going to do what I did on the front. So now I have these alignment lines. So when I come in with a saw and cut those slots, uh, I know that they're going to align with the center line of the lure. And to get the slot thickness that I need, I'm going to have to use a uh, hacksaw with two hacksaw blades in it. Okay, so now I've got these slotted in deep enough so I have a little slop at the back. So it'll, it'll rotate on the pin. Got this marked to the half mark. The pinholes are cut oversized, so they'll be nice and sloppy, but I want the pinholes in the wood to be tight. So I've got this depth gauge set uh, to the exact spot. I've also marked the center lines so I can set them up just right. Okay, so there it is with the pins in. Okay, so there it is, just temporarily uh, put together. You can see a relatively small gap in between the two joints uh, and a very, very free range of motion. Uh, that kind of thing is really cool. And then, of course, it uh, folds over for easy storage. So now I've got to do some finish sanding, uh, glue these things together, seal the wood, assemble it well, and get ready for painting. And then we'll take it out on the water and see how it performs. So if you're enjoying these kinds of videos, subscribe. Click on that little bell and you won't miss any of them. And certainly comment, ask questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. So you can...